We welcome all of you, all of you, to Allen Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Kansas, 9-9, Missouri and KU. Elijah Johnson tries to break the tie, can't. It's into the hands of Phil Pressey at the other end. Ratliff, who's off to a quick start in this game. And he banks it off the glass to give Mizzou another lead, their third of the ball game. Vern Lundquist, Clark Kellogg. This one historic and significant. Tia off the bench. Another turnover. Denman with the bounce pass. They are quick, Clark. Extremely. And they want to win the turnover game as Pressey unable to convert inside, but Ratliff doing a terrific job here in the early going. Here's Tyshawn Taylor. Jeff Whippy injured at the 17-minute mark in the locker room. The seven-footer for KU with a turned ankle. From the corner, three-point specialist Connor Tehan. He's the sixth man for KU. And Bill Self getting ready to go to his bench again as Justin Wesley's coming on. On the baseline, blocking foul. It's on Young. And take a look at the current up-to-date Big 12 standings. Kansas with two defeats, Missouri three, two of those to K-State. So a Kansas win today cinches at least a tie for the Big 12 title. A Missouri win puts them into a tie with two games remaining, and they have the tiebreaker edge over KU. 12-11, KU. First game between these two back on February 4th, 74-71. Here's Dixon off the glass and fouled again. Take a look at those on the court on the left. Pressy, Dixon off the bench, Denman, English, and Ratliff. Matt Pressy is on the bench with two fouls for Kansas. Taylor, Tehan, Relaford, Thomas Robinson, and Young for the moment. Second foul on Elijah Johnson. Relaford on, Johnson out. And Michael Dixon, Jr. from Kansas City, Missouri, on the line. Leads the country in scoring among six men who have not started a game this year. Almost 13 points per ball game. And Vern, he does it because he can shoot the three, and he's an excellent driver and finisher in traffic. That's Justin Wesley, the sophomore. Quarter showdown. This is the 267th meeting. It will be the last in regular season play with these two as conference opponents. First meeting, 1907. And here we are, 105 yards later, years later. That looked ugly. Yeah, that's a hard biscuit. That's not a soft roll. That's that a is, hard biscuit. That's the shot of a man who's hitting 9 for 18 from the line for the year. You called it. That looked better. Right on average. Tied at 13. Here's Phil Pressey. They really want to try to keep Phil Pressey out of the lane. Very impressed in the early going by Missouri's patience. In the half court, they've not forced it in multiple possessions. They've spread out Kansas, and they'll try to isolate their excellent guards for dribble drives or ball movement and three-point shots. Ten on the shot clock. Taylor gets a block from Steve Moore, who's off the bench. There's the shot from the corner. Relaford has it. Leaves it for Tyshawn Taylor. Robinson getting a rest now. Bill Self telling us yesterday, one of their problems is they got they got too many they had to play him too many minutes. Exactly, he'd love to keep him right around 30 minutes a game. He's up at about 32 or three, and Bill told us that it probably is going to go to 34, 35 minutes the rest of the season. Hell ball goes Missouri's way. Well, the Tigers this year look at third and field goal percentage, and that's after they shot 38.8 in the loss at home to K State. They only turn it over 10 and a half times per game. Great free throw shooting team. Uh, they've had just a sensational year. Phenomenal year, and Frank Hay, certainly one of the coaches that will be strongly considered for coach of the year, taking over a senior-laden team in his first season 
being able to get them to this point. And you talk about what Missouri does to win ball games. It's threes, threes, and tees. Yes. Three-point shooting, free throw shooting, and winning the turnover game. 12.40 to go opening half, tied at 13. And good news for KU, Jeff Withy is back on the floor. Bad news for KU, he just got called for a foul. That's a tough call against Kansas because I thought Withy was in good position and he went up. I think one of the things that him and Thomas Robinson really do well, Vern, is they body up and wall up without fouling. In other words, they get their hands and bodies in good position and don't come down over the top to commit a foul. And I thought that's what Withy did there. Denman fortunate to be at the line. Marcus Denman for the season, 90%. 90, now 100 out of 111. 100, and, and we said <laughs> they're a decent free throw shooting team. Withy will have to sit with his second foul. And Denman shoots one more. I think only Oklahoma State shoots better from the line in Big 12 play, and only Texas and Oklahoma State, I think, have made more free throws than Missouri. It's a big part of how they're successful because they've got guards that can drive you, shoot the three, and play through contact and draw foul. Well, this is as big as Missouri can get. They've got both Ricardo Ratliff and Steve Moore on the floor. Here's Tyshawn Taylor. No. Follow good. Ratliff right there. Tied again at 15. Missouri ranked number three in the country. That poll taken before their loss at home to K-State the other night. Texas a winner on the road, but Bill Self was not very pleased with his team. Denver. That one rattles down in the well and comes back out. Here's Relaford lost it. On the line, turnover. 11.40 to go. First half. CBS Sports NCAA basketball coverage is sponsored by the all-new Buick Verano. Unexpected luxury in a car this size. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Reese's, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. Well, let's take you through what has been a very satisfying Missouri season thus far. It has been excellent. Kansas State, two of the three losses, matchup trouble there for Mizzou, but one of the best shooting teams in the country because they move the ball, they've got multiple weapons, and they can shoot a variety of shots. And, and for Kansas. You look at Kansas leading the Big 12, a sterling record as well. Unbeaten, unblemished here at Allen Fieldhouse. And Thomas Robinson clearly along with Anthony Davis, who we saw earlier, have a splendid performance in the win against Vanderbilt. Those two guys have separated themselves as the top player of the year candidates in college basketball this season. Well, we have had uh, seven lead changes already here in the first half. Timeout called by Frank Haith of Missouri. So with 11.30 to go, in the first half, we're still tied. Let's take a look at our Applebee's neighborhood favorites on February 7th, 97. Top-ranked Kansas visited upset minded Missouri. Down one in double overtime. The Tigers' Corey Tate picked up a loose ball, nailed a 16-foot jumper with 5.6 seconds to go. Kansas couldn't counter. Missouri won one of the best games in this great rivalry's history. When you go back to 1990, Clark, the two teams played here when they were ranked number one and number two, and Missouri won that game here at, uh, at Allen Fieldhouse. Matter of fact, when they've been top ten, this is the fourth time they have met, and Missouri is 3-0. That one blocked. That's blocked by Kevin Young. Screen set by Young. Picked him up. Oh, 
And as if they needed any instigating, the crowd is up and demands to be heard. Floater, Dixon. Got to hit the mute button for him. <laughs> this team is as focused as I've seen the team all season. When I talked to some of the Missouri players as they were warming up, I talked to Kim English and had a chance to visit with Marcus Denman a little bit. These guys are locked in and know what's at stake, and they are confident they can come in here and win on the road. Robinson missed that short jump shot. Neither team shooting particularly well right now. Is that a matter of inept offense or really good defense? Except when Ratliff is that close. I think it's a combination. One early, early on, the emotion and the adrenaline is flowing and going pretty hot and heavy. But the execution of Missouri has been impressive thus far. Well, the current AP top 10 has Kentucky and Syracuse, I think, consensus number one picks. No uh, question. Number one seeds. No question about it. They're locked in unless something catastrophic happens. And Kentucky looking like the overall number one seed. We look at the back half of the top 10 there. Marquette got a big win last night against West Virginia. In your mind, is this a game for a number one seed? Not this game itself, but it will have impact on who ends up being your top, your other two number one seeds. Not only do you have this having ramifications for the Big 12 title, but also you look at the Big 12 tournament and where these teams will end up seeded and being located in the in the bracket. So this game has multiple ramifications. Good luck for Michael Dick. This kid has been unbelievable. Yes, late. he has. 18 points a game in his last six, shooting a high percentage. How about this, Vern? You look at Dixon in his last seven games, 17 points a game, 70% on two-point field goal makes, 46% from three, and then 83% from the line. That's efficiency at the offensive end. Ratliff has been the anchor inside to start this game so far for Missouri. Running the floor, he's got tremendous hands, Burn. He doesn't bobble a lot of balls, and when he catches them inside, he can finish over people or through people. And for the season, he's hitting 72% from the field, second in the country. That's Robinson with a little short, soft, baby hook. At the other end, Pressy, jumper. Whoa, when they get on fire from outside, they are tough. But it's all predicated on the penetration of Phil Pressy, and that's one of the things Kansas worked on yesterday. They've got to try to corral Pressy and keep him out of the lane, because when he gets in the lane, he's not looking to score. He's looking to get it to those three-point shooters. Dixon with the split between Robinson. Ratliff with the offensive board. Hell ball, possession arrow cancels. Vern, we're seeing some of the things that allowed Missouri to win in Columbia. Good help by Kevin Young. He may have committed a foul and then the held ball as Ratliff cleaned up the offensive board. But dribble penetration containing that in Columbia was a problem for Kansas. Not only does it give the guy with the ball a chance to score it or pass it out to three-point shooters, it makes you vulnerable on the offensive glass. So the key for Kansas is, one, taking advantage of their size offensively, but defensively, they've got to be able to keep Missouri out of the paint off the dribble. Another miss by Robinson as he goes baseline. Stephen Moore now on the floor from Missouri. You've got Dixon, Pressy, Denman, Moore. And you can see Bill Coming. Self going small now. Yeah. He's only got Robinson out there as a front line player. Whippy going to sit, and that's part of the reason he didn't score in the first meeting. He was only able to play 20 minutes. Another jumper inside the arc for Kim English. Largest lead of the game now, five for the Tigers. And the Tigers have stayed in this zone. Kansas has to be very patient and be intentional about trying to probe the ball inside and get it moved from side to side. Vern Bill Self talks about playing from the second and third side. That means swing that ball and move the defense. Tehan tries to find Robinson in the paint. Out of bounds. It'll be KU's ball. They suddenly find themselves down with 7.26 to go. First half. 
Missouri by five. Both teams with six free throws. Ratliff and Robinson have led the way. It's very likely, as we mentioned, that Kentucky and Syracuse will be the first two number one seeds. That being said, let's take a look at our poll question for the week. Who will be the third number one seed? We'll give you a choice. Duke, Kansas, Michigan State, Missouri, North Carolina. Log on to Facebook.com slash hoops on CBS to make your voice heard. We'll have your results in the second half. I tell you, it could be any one of those five teams. Burn the way Michigan State has been playing. I know they've still got some games left before the Big Ten championship is decided. They see Ohio State next week. But if I had to pick a team today, I might tip my hat towards the Spartans based on how well they play. Connor Tehan is second three of the ball game. Senior, red shirt senior, second team, academic all Big 12 this year out of Leewood, Kansas. That one is thrown away. Well, that's a pass Steve Moore has to catch because the opportunity was there. He had his guy beat and had a layup had he caught it cleanly. Tehan had struggled coming into, the, into this game, Burn. He had only made three of his last 16 threes in the four prior games, and you've been with me long enough. When good shooters are struggling, when they get out of it, it's because they continue to work and they break out of it in a big way. He's made his first two triples here today. Pull up jumper, Taylor. Ty Sean Taylor ties it up. So the three by T. Han, the two by Taylor, 27 all. Kevin Young on the baseline. That's out of bounds. And that is KU ball. March Madness right around the corner. Sign up now at cbsports.com slash brackets to be notified when the bracket games launch. Back-to-back -back turnovers. As we mentioned at the outset, Mizzou only averages 10.5. They've now got four in the game. There's Danny Manning, assistant coach to Bill Self. Still the all-time scoring leader in KU history and uh, the leader of the 1988 championship team coached by Larry Brown, who was also here. Floater, Johnson. KU's lead is two. Off the glass, really high off the glass, Dixon. Between Denman and Dixon, those two guards, despite their lack of size, they make a lot of tough shots off the dribble. That was a nice feed from Robinson to Kevin Young, and the foul is called. So Kansas goes back to the line. The foul is on Ratliff, his first. Coming up on AT&T at the half, the two Gregs are back in the studio. Mr. Gumble, Mr. Anthony, and Seth Davis will join him for all the scores and highlights and the latest NCAA tournament news all coming up on AT&T at the half. Kevin Young forced into action in part because Missouri likes to play the four guards and also Jeff Withy may be suffering from that injury that happened early in the ball game. And two quick fouls. Off the glass and good. <clears throat> Boy, they are explosive, aren't they? Oh, my Missouri goodness. Tigers team. About I mean, as quick, Clark, getting up and down the floor oh as anybody. Oh, man, they don't hesitate, boy. Bill Self after the uh, practice yesterday. Here's a jumper that ties it up. Told us there's Jeff Whitty with two fouls and a twisted ankle. He said the key for us is transition defense. Yes, yeah. and keeping the Tigers out of the paint as well. Right, right. Out the dribble. Boy, we've got a terrific battle going on now. Robinson showing you big time moves in the post. Ratliff has been excellent. Denman from in the back, almost at half 40 shot that one. That was like a half-hearted defensive rebound effort between Tiemann and Young. Here's Tehan. He'll put it on the floor. Johnson. Rebound Mizzou. KU has to be careful that they don't get into a three-point shooting contest with Missouri. Bill wants his team to be aggressive and not pass up good shots, but he wants that ball in the paint more times than not. Well, Frank Haight. Well, in the series history, you see, you go back to 1990, they were one versus two, and uh, Missouri won both here and in Columbia. 
And again, earlier this year, both top 10, and Missouri won that one 74 71. First meeting as Pressy goes to the line was 1907. And, and Missouri won the first game 34 31. They liked it so much, they played again two days later. <laughs> <laughs> and Missouri won that one convincingly 31 12 the coaches in that game For Kansas, I bet you can guess James Naismith, Naismith. Dr. Naismith certainly. Yep. Isidore Stevens for Missouri. Thank you. I was hoping you would finish that well I just because I couldn't quite fill in that blank. I wasn't gonna leave that as a trivia question. Okay. I uh, appreciate it no. Nice job by you to drop some additional knowledge <laughs> on us though well I don't think anybody from outside Missouri or Kansas, maybe those in the Big 12. Robinson's going to go to the line. I don't think Clark. Oh, offensive. Wow. Let's take a look. Nice pass. Good cut by Thomas Robinson. Boy, that's a tough one. Another Whoa. angle. Oh, I think that's an off. I think that's a block. He's, he seemed to be in the restricted area arc and also was moving yes so that's a tough call for thomas robinson to pick up his second i think they missed it there Vern. Mm. english ratliff pressy dixon and denman high screen set by ratliff jumper from the corner three Timeout, Kansas. Five point Missouri lead. Well, a couple of weeks from Selection Sunday. How about Big 12 teams on the bubble? I tell you what, Iowa State got a big win today earlier against Kansas State on the road. That always carries additional weight in my evaluation. I would think they're, um, at, at, at this point today, I would think they're strongly. Um, perhaps looking on the inside of that bubble. Texas, on the other hand, probably a team that is squarely on it based on the little bit of information we have with so much basketball yet to be played. But I think Iowa State, and boy, I tell you, that's a dangerous team. They've got Royce White, one of the most versatile stat sheet stuffers in the country, kind of playing the point forward for them. And they can spread you out and knock down threes from multiple positions for Fred Hoiberg. Here's Tehan with the drive and the kick out. Ty Tyshawn Taylor guarded by Tim English. Well, that was Marshall a big call against Robinson. Yes, it was. That it was, was a huge bench. call. Yep. Went to the bench with three and a half to go. At the other end, oh, almost threw it away. Did Relaford. But Tyshawn Taylor got it. He's guarded by Dixon. As uh, with it, there's a nice feed. Blocked. Ratliff. Burn, I see something happening here that could be problematic for Kansas. They cannot, I don't think they can beat Missouri playing Missouri's game, which is small ball. Their strength and advantage is being able to go inside. And if they don't find a way to be able to play Robinson and Whitney effectively, Missouri is better at this game than Kansas is. As a matter of fact, they are better at this game than most every team in the country because they've got so many guys that can dribble drive you and spray threes. And that was Denman. This is a 10-2 run. Floater and a foul called. 2.44 to go, first half. Timeout. Missouri has assisted on 11 of its 13 made field goals. Ball is here in Pressy's hands. He's going to dribble into this area and then kick it out to Denman for a three. And this is one of the things Missouri does really well, and Kansas really worked on trying to contain that action in yesterday's practice. And then you see there Marcus Morris and then brother Markeith. Okay, which is which? So Markeith is right there. Are you positive? I am positive. Sure? I, lo I locked it in when I did them the last couple of years, and that's Marcus there. It took me three years. Did it? Finally, at practice here a year ago, I noticed that one of them had a wristband. Right, right. I don't see him wearing them in the stands. <laughs> no, we only had the face shot, so it had that to be based right. on something other than wristbands there, partner. Well, because of the NBA All-Star break, there's a huge contingent 
of Kansas alums that have made their way here. Uh, just an enormous number of guys who've come back. I saw a colleague of yours, Kevin Pritchard, mm -hmm. who's with you now with the Pacers. That's right. Yep. Assistant general manager there. Bud Stallworth is here, who 40 years ago put up 50 for KU against Missouri. Second highest point total ever. Up and under. Good play. Wow. Right now, Kansas just has to hang on here, Vern. They've got to execute at the offensive end, and they really don't have any post presence now. With Robinson with the two fouls, with the, with two fouls as well. So that means Tyshawn Taylor going to have to be creative. And then Tehan, if he can get a good look, going to have to be able to spray a three. In and out, Wesley gets the rebound, but then the putback is deflected. There is a foul call. Jeff Withy, who had such high hopes of being an important part in this game, has played three minutes in the first half. Withy turned an ankle at the 17 minute point, came back, and within 30 seconds, picked up his second foul. Robinson's also over there with his second. And Justin Wesley shows you again why he's a 50% free throw shooter. John, uh, Steve back, big pardon. Steve Moore back on. It's a lonely feeling, isn't it? Very much so. Very much so. The momentum has shifted. Missouri in full control of things right now and looking to add to a comfortable cushion here before the break. Denman deflected, saved, kicked outside. It is thrown away. Kansas ball. 137 to go. Well, formidable odds against Missouri coming in. Since losing to Texas A&M five years and 22 days ago on this court, <laughs> KU has gone 89 and one. And we were here for the one. Last year, Last they lost year to Kansas. Texas. Texas, Texas mm -hmm. sorry. Reach in foul, Matt Pressey. That's his third foul. He's back on the floor for less than 20 seconds. Well, a lot of movement going on among conferences, and the Big 12 has been affected. Nebraska went to the Big 10, Colorado the Pac-12. And next year, A&M and Missouri will go to the SEC. Meanwhile, West Virginia and Texas Christian are coming into the Big 12. Some of us don't understand it all. It's a uh, crazy, chaotic puzzle as you look at Pressey picking up his third foul. Frank Hay felt like he could take a chance with the senior with two fouls to be able to go two and a half minutes without picking up his third did not work out. And KU sabotaging its own comeback effort at the free throw line. Coming seven, up empty. Seven to 15 now. Trap. That's for three. Dixon. No. But look at Steve Moore get the rebound. When they space you out so much, Vern, it really becomes difficult to rebound the ball because they're taking long shots, which are usually long rebounds. It's hard to block out and go after long rebounds. You almost just have to be able to pursue the ball with speed. And in that game, Missouri has an advantage. What an impressive first half. For the Tigers of Missouri, how about that pick? And there's the shot taken short, but another offensive board, 4-3, and he canned it. Relliford. Would you have believed an hour ago? that the Missouri Tigers would come into a sold-out Allen Fieldhouse lead by 12. Greg Gumbel will be next after these words. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. AT&T, get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. 
Hi, everyone, and welcome to AT&T at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel. 20 minutes of play gone by in Lawrence, Missouri, leads Kansas 44-32. to 32. These guys have been by my side all day, Greg Anthony and Seth Davis. Anything surprising you about this game? Well, the, I think if you're Bill Self, the biggest concern was going to be defensive transition, and you know Missouri's going to shoot the ball well from three. But take a look at this possession here. This is off of a missed free throw from Kansas. Look here, five guys for Missouri below the free throw line. Now, Marcus Dittman is going to procure this rebound and take a look at the transition. Quickly, they turn this into a 201, and Dixon able to get the finish. You cannot prepare for quickness, and that's a big concern for Bill Self, and it will continue to be in this game if they cannot contain defensive transition. And the irony is the way that Missouri's quickness has enabled them to have an advantage in terms of rebounding, plus seven on the boards, and I think Kansas is fortunate to be even this close to Missouri, considering they had to play the last four minutes of the first half without Thomas Robinson, without Jeff Withey, both those guys with two fouls. They need to ride those two big horses if they're going to come back and win. Kansas with a 20-game home win streak on the line. They're trailing at halftime. Vanderbilt at Kentucky today, Greg. Great defense by Kentucky. How about Michael Kick Gilchrist here? Beautiful change of direction in the finish. Cats up six at that point, and then Gilchrist misses the jumper, but Anthony Davis, how about these player of the year credentials? 28 points, 11 rebounds, six blocks, and here just a little ice seen on the cake by Terrence Jones as the Wildcats roll. Kentucky shot 57% from the floor. Virginia Tech at Duke, Greg. Austin Rivers is going to come up here. I should say that's a game tying opportunity for Virginia Tech does not fall. And then you get Austin Rivers on the penetration in the finish. Excuse me, that's Seth Curry. He had a game high 19. And then last opportunity for Virginia Tech unable to convert on this layup they would have to fight foul there and unfortunately Virginia Tech had an opportunity to win this game on the road Duke at times stuff has struggled at home Duke six straight wins they win it by five in OT North Carolina paying a visit to Virginia Seth yeah this was a pretty ugly game back in Chapel Hill but that's a very pretty move by Harrison Barnes that put Carolina up by six Virginia though got hot from the outside, especially Sammy Zaglinski. Watch him hit the three-pointer. This caps off a 22-9 run that ended the first half and allowed the Cavaliers to uh, take the lead by four. Now they lead by two. Early moments of the second half. Meanwhile, Villanova at Georgetown earlier here. Yeah, w watch Maurice Sutton here. You see him circle. The Otto Porter for Georgetown comes in, absolutely levels him with an elbow to the mouth. Uh, Porter was bleeding. They looked at the video replay. They only gave Sutton a flagrant one. I thought he was very fortunate not to get tossed. It didn't much matter. This was all Hoyas from the start. That's Hollis Thompson, the drive, the layup, and this season cannot end soon enough for Villanova. Villanova's lost four in a row. Meanwhile, UCLA paying a visit to Arizona, Greg. In Arizona with an opportunity to stay in the Pac-12 race here. Jesse Perry with a nice spin move and the finish up over the top, and then a nice little handoff here to Kyle Fogg to knock down the three, but the game wasn't over. UCLA with an opportunity here at the end to either tie it or win it, but Jeremy Anderson unable to hit the off-balance jump shot. The Cats hold on. Arizona wins it by 265-63. Number 12, Florida at Georgia, Seth. Well, you know, Florida coach Billy Donovan had to get on his guys for not really showing a lot of effort, even when they beat Auburn. They're playing this game without one of the most important reserves off the bench, and will you get? They were really struggling from three. That was their first three of the game by Kenny Boyton. They missed their first seven, but they are now early in the second half, and the Georgia Bulldogs own a 10-point lead over an uninspired Gators. Meanwhile, in Waco, Oklahoma paying a visit to the Baylor Bears. And, and Baylor trying to get back on track but early on Stephen Pledger here with the fade and the foul Oklahoma led by three at half but then Pierre Jackson got it going from beyond the arc knocking down that three Baylor up three at that point then Brazy Brady Heslip here knocks down a three he had four on the day that capped a 17 4 run for Baylor Baylor wins it by 10 a reminder this season AT&T helps you keep up with college basketball action like never before visit cbsports.com on your AT&T device to get the latest highlights scores and expert analysis with AT&T 4G LTE. Thank you for joining us here on AT&T at the half. We'll get you back out to Lawrence for the second half of Missouri and Kansas after this. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. AT&T, get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. CBS Sports NCAA basketball coverage is sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. LG, life's good. And by State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. 44-32 Missouri to the absolute delight of the few Mizzou fans who are here.
are up by 12. Let's take you through some highlights of the first half, Clark. Boy, it was a terrific half for the Tigers. They came in focused and ready to handle business. Six of 14 from behind the three-point line. Whiffy went out early with fouls and an ankle injury, apparently an ankle injury. 12 assists on 15 made buckets. Penetration, creating high-quality shots for Missouri. And, and then how we about, got, uh, yeah, we got shot, shot selection. Out. Well, he loves that left side, Vern. You see it right there. Three of his shots coming from the left side. Three of his made triples. And then Thomas Robinson, who only played 14 minutes, picked up his second foul late in the half, was off to a really strong start doing his work in the paint area. Now let's take a look at the Coke Zero first half stats. Well, this is a problem for KU. Seven of 15 from the line, but also not being able to get the kind of presence inside because of the foul trouble and injury to Whippy, and then Thomas Robinson having to sit the last four minutes of the first half. Uh, Danny Manning giving a little bit of last minute advice to Thomas Robinson. This represents the largest home court halftime deficit in almost five years. They trailed Texas by 12. Came back to one. Kim English will inbound right above our spot and puts it in the hands of Phil Pressey. Well, Vern, if Kansas is going to get back into this, it's going to have to start at the defensive end. They've got to do a better job of corralling the penetration of Missouri. Jumper over Relaford. That's not a good start. It isn't because you're playing off of him, trying to keep him out of the lane. Phil Pressey recognized that and then just pulled up for the jump shot. That's why they're so dangerous. They can shoot the three on catch and shoots or off the dribble, and if you crowd them, they can go by you. And they're tough. These guys are undersized, Vern, but they play with a tenacity and a chip that allows them to compete at a high level against bigger people. Well, Matt Pressey, it took him all of 32 seconds to pick up his fourth foul. So I would suspect we will not see him again for quite some time. The senior, who is Phil Pressey's brother and uh, the son, of course, he is Paul Matthew Pressey Jr., his dad, on the staff of Cleveland, Whitty with his first basket. English and Pressey, Dixon, Ratliff for the big first half. And Denman with an even bigger first half. This is Dixon. Relaford is a defensive specialist. He's on in. Now backs away. Ratliff again. Well, he's almost got a double-double. That's 12 points now and nine rebounds. And you just mentioned it, Vern. I think he was the guy who jump-started Missouri because he gave him something inside at the start of the game. Screen set. Entry pass, Robinson double team immediately from English. There's Whitty. Got, got a height advantage. Boy, did he ever. And he finds Robinson, and a foul is called. Michael Dixon, Jr. Well, I love the way this guy can finish off the dribble, and he gets out in transition. If you don't get up on him, he can pull up and shoot the three. He's got the full offensive arsenal for a perimeter guy. Robinson, 69% for the year. He's also a good passer, too, Michael Dixon. I mean, he's not selfish. He'll dribble in there, and if he doesn't have a good look, he'll find the open guy. Robinson has improved his free throw shooting since the last time we were courtside for the Jayhawks when they were at Texas Burn about a month ago. Yeah. Robinson perfect at the line. He shot four times so far. Here's Denman. Switch that time by the guards, Taylor and Johnson. Now you got to handle the pick and roll action. You mean they don't? And they don't. No. Withy is just not quite able to move laterally quick enough to handle that pick and roll. You might have to change your strategy on it, but I don't know what you do. You might try to trap it, but then you still got to be able to rotate out of it. I just don't know if Kansas has the type of speed, and obviously Whitty is hurt too. He's not 100%. Right. He's trying to gut it out, but Bill Self might have to go back 
to better defensive matchups and trust that Robinson and Taylor can carry him offensively. From the corner, English. Oh, they're deadly. Such a good shooting team. And it forces Bill Self to use a KU timeout. 17.34 to go in the ballgame. Missouri was hampered in their loss at home to K-State by poor three-point shooting. That has not been the case today. Not at all. They have gotten good looks, and they have made the most of them. You know, in the three losses, Missouri has only shot 19 of 69 from the three-point line. I talked about threes, mm -hmm. threes, and tees. That's who they are, and they're playing their game at a really high level here today in Lawrence. And for this game, 7 of 15 from three-point range. And uh, Mizzou has given Kansas its largest deficit in a game this year. Relative, no. Into the hands of Dixon. Kansas is not a high volume or high quality three-point shooting team. And there's pressure doing what he does so well. Penetrating and puncturing your defense and then dropping dimes that are room service like. Now he averages six assists per game, and that was a perfect example of why he is such a gifted player on this team. Yeah, he's one of the Bob Cousy Award finalists for the nation's top point guard. The only other Big 12 guy on that list, Pierre Jackson from Baylor. And there you see the largest deficit so far this season for the Jayhawks. And pressing now with eight assists in the ball game. I think he's had five games where he's had double-digit assists this season. Taylor. I never thought I'd be saying this here, but that cuts the lead for Missouri to 16. Well, I've seen Kansas come from behind right. many a time, and they've got the ability to do that. Tyshawn Taylor can go on many runs himself, but he's got to do it defensively. When you're down by as much as Kansas is, you've got to stay focused and disciplined, but it's hard against a high-octane team like Missouri. Johnson at the other end. They're changing it up now defensively, yes. Byrne. They're going to a zone. Kansas is going to try to play a zone here and see if they can disrupt what Missouri is doing. English back to pressing. Actually, Looks like this time, yeah, it was his arm. But you got a rebound and misses. Saved by Robinson. Really just kind of trying to slough off there for the Jayhawks. Connor T. Hands on the floor now. And he is the three point specialist on this team. Here's Robinson. Puts it up. Rebound English for Missouri. Short, Tehan, Kansas, Johnson, Tehan, this is Taylor, tries to drive by, does, Johnson spot up three, and a foul is called, as the basket went in, the foul is on Ratliff, as Robinson hits the deck. How about that? Yeah, penetration by Tyshawn Taylor. Boy, he was close to traveling before that pass, but a little light for the Jayhawks. Hey. Take you quickly through this week's RPI Top 10. Take a look at this. Syracuse, Duke, Michigan State, Kentucky, North Carolina, followed by, there's Kansas, Michigan 10th, and no Mizzou. They are actually 13th in the latest RPI, but it's another indicator as to what the RPI is. It is an indicator, one of many tools used by the selection committee. And as you watch this Missouri Tigers team play, it's hard not to think that they're not one of the top seven or eight teams in the country. You know, the, the, when is the RPI going to include an eyeball test? Oh, it does. The committee, you know, that's why we okay. have the 10-person committee. All right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how that happens. I, I'm right. just guessing that they're among the top 10 teams. I've oh, seen. no question. No question. Are they, Missouri, the quickest team you've seen this year? Off the top of your head? They're right there. Okay. I've not seen a quicker team. Okay. Let's put it that way. Okay. 
Jumper, English, short. Johnson, he's got it. Missouri back in transition defense, though. I would probably put Kentucky in that conversation in terms of speed and quickness. But they got a little lift and size to go along with it, which makes them, in my mind, the clear number one team in the country, which they've been most of the season. There's the double team. Here's Robinson. Turnaround jumper. Tough, 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 tough shot there. Yep. I can't tell you how tough that shot was because he was walled up. He didn't have much room, but he found a way to get it over the top. Lead is 11. Crowd is up. This is an 11 to 3 Kansas run. From the corner, Dixon. They are deadly. But it starts again, Vern. I've got to go back to why he's able to get that shot. The penetration. Flip Pressy is able to break down the defense and get into that lane. And when he does that, he is at his absolute best because he's driving to draw defenders and get people open shots. Now, Marcus Denman listed at 6'3", and he averages 5.5 rebounds per game. He just got another one. Despite their small nature, this Missouri team does have a rebounding edge over games in the course of the season. Not much. They're actually winning the rebound battle here against Kansas. At least they were at halftime. Yes. A uh, comfortable margin at the last break. They were plus eight on the glass, so another reason why they're on top double digits. Good defense that time by KU. Shot clock violation. Yep. Jeff Withy back again, limited to three point three minutes in the first half because of, and we never were told if indeed it was a turned ankle. I can't tell if it was an ankle or knee, but he's obviously a little gimpy and yeah. just trying to fight through it for his team. And you know the young man wanted to come back from his prior performance against Missouri and have a big game and still has time to perhaps contribute, but he certainly is not 100%. Well, two blocks there, the last by Steve Moore knocked it away from Whitty, and yet again, here is Missouri with the ball. I think the Tigers will be content, Vern, to be methodical and patient in the half court because they've been able to get quality shots off dribble penetration. How about that? That's a tough shot there, but he can make tough shots. Driving or pulling up for the jumper. Dixon has 16, and again, he plays off the bench. Now, he's had substantial minutes today because from the corner team, that's for three. That's what he does best. A little bit of the Tigers' own medicine there. Dribble penetration, drive and kick. And the Jayhawks have made four threes in this half. But they need to accomplish something at this end. And the loose ball's on the deck. Jump ball. Hell ball. Possession arrow. Kansas. So KU will have it trailing by 13 when we come back after this. CBS Sports NCAA basketball coverage is sponsored by the Chevrolet Volt. It's more car than electric. Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. And by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Bill Self, his team over the course of the year, 38% field goal percentage defense and Missouri today, 50 one percent but Mizzou was above 50 percent for the season till the, the poor shooting out uh, effort against case exactly yeah. they've been at the top of the heap and field goal percentage offense all year long it's a combination of shot makers and the quality of shots they get Kansas though with an opportunity against this zone to try to get that ball inside and cut further into the deficit uh, look at the quick hands of Pressy. Got it away from Tehan. Here's Denman. Easy. Tell you what, Pressy can control the game and not hardly and score hardly at all, Vern. His quickness, his ability to pressure the basketball. 
Well, as expected, the Tigers spread the scoring around. So they've got five guys that average double digits on the season. They share the ball, they take good shots, and they can make tough ones. And three players today with 16, Ratliff, Dixon, and Denman. Really. Boy, Kevin Young has really given them some nice energy, Vern. His activity's been good. He's got five rebounds. Four block shots he has, but he's hurt himself and his team at the line, unable to convert them. That one looked nice. Good yep. rotation and good result. Now Dixon's back on the floor. I'll well. give Flip Pressy, Philip Pressy, a chance to get a break. And Matthew Pressy, his older brother, is back on the floor. He does play with four fouls. Well, Frank Hafe would like to get something from Matt Pressy in order to have Flip Pressy available and rest it for the stretch run. Loose ball. English, how about that little in the air maneuver? And it's back to a 16 point margin. Mizzou has not won here in the last 12 trips. Kevin Young slams it on. Nicely done by Tyshawn Taylor. Beautiful penetration under control in the bounce pass. One of the other things about this game, Missouri has seemed to come up with more of the loose balls. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got a pit bull tenacity to them that has helped them get this lead. And that's something that I think you don't see when you're watching them on television, Vern. Right. You look at their size, their speed, but the tenacity with which they play is something that you feel and get a real good handle on being courtside. Nice penetration and bounce pass by Taylor. And a good job by Kevin Young to keep his cut alive. He availed himself to this pass by not cutting his cut off short. That's the sixth team foul, the foul on Moore of Missouri. Kansas with no fouls in this half. Tehan is now four for four. What did I tell you yesterday when we were sitting here watching him play? Yes. What did I tell you? You said he's going to play well. He's going to break out of it because he shoots too good. This kid is a terrific shooter. Rotation, scoring up, and he's found his stroke, and his Jayhawk teammates need it. Back to an 11 point Missouri lead. Denman. Good defense oh by boy, Johnson. Yo -yo. Until he didn't stay in his stance. Yep. He stood up after he had done a good job on the initial thrust. And that's four on Elijah Johnson, who had a big game in the win on the road earlier in the week when he had 18 first half points and a total of 21. But now he has to take a seat on the bench with his fourth foul. That's the first foul in this half against KU. They call Kevin Young. That's his second. Boy, the loss of Elijah Johnson with that fourth foul, Vern. Mm -hmm. He's a very capable three-point shooter, although he's not shot it well all season. The last game, he exploded for 21 and was starting to find the rhythm here in the second half. And when you're trying to come from behind, you need stops. But that three-point shot is also a nice injector when you're trying to come from behind. 9.22 to go. Missouri leading by 11. Put back no good. Kansas ball. Well, just to re-emphasize what's at stake, a Kansas win would assure them of no worse than the tie for their eighth consecutive league title. A Missouri win would tie them with Kansas, and they would have the tiebreaker edge if the two teams remain tied at the end of regular season play. Robinson. For the first time in this half, Missouri's lead is only single digits. A 
Uh, Clark and I are very, very privileged. We get to travel around the country and watch college basketball in a variety of venues. If you are a basketball fan, put this one on your bucket list. Uh, it's my personal favorite. I it is love right at the very top of my list as well, Byron. Students began gathering last Sunday evening in groups for the right to be first inside. And they have uh, found reason to stand up and cheer now. English. Rebound, Tyshawn Taylor. Pressy back defensively. Young. Relaford muscles his way in. And he will shoot free throws. That's an apt description because he did just muscle his way into free throws there. Kept his dribble alive and got his body into the defender. I've been very impressed with the activity of Kevin Young. And again, with Withy being saddled with early foul trouble and also an injury he suffered early in the game. Kevin Young has been pressed into duty and he's been a pretty good matchup for this small ball Missouri Tigers team. Well, they have uh, hurt themselves at the free throw line, has Kansas. Big time, big time, Burns. 10 of 20, 50% as a team. And that was the front end of a one and one. Pressing. Taylor. Hell ball, possession arrow, Missouri. Oh, it is a foul. Sorry, I thought he held both wrists up. This is what Pressy does late in the shot clock. Tyshawn got an awful lot of the pumpkin, but he also got some arm as well. And Missouri, very good at the free throw line as a team. Over the course of the year, 78%. Oops. It hadn't gotten a foot away from my lips, and I knew. <laughs> Jinx. All coincidental, you know that. <laughs> One of two for Pressy. Eight minutes to go. Pressy with eight points and ten assists. Taylor. Nice. What a strong move. And Robinson did a nice job keeping help side defenders from being able to get to Taylor. Margin is eight, crowd is up. Dixon can't get around the corner. Tyson Taylor came up gimpy a couple of plays ago, Vern. I don't know what he did, but he is walking around gingerly. Keep an eye on that, folks. <laughs> Missouri leads by eight. Nine points in the last three ten and looking for three points. That's huge. Five of seven here in the second half for Kansas. Part of why they've been able to cut what was a 19 point deficit. And it is now eight. Kim English is going to the free throw line. Good activity by Young. He's kept a couple of balls alive and that's part of the run by Kansas as well. And there's Max Falkenstein, one of my favorites. You uh, you know that this is the final game as conference opponents. He broadcast his first game in 1947. He joined the broadcast in 46. But he's seen 118 of these games. Wow. Going strong at 87 years of age. Isn't that something? Worked with Bob Davis for the last 25 years. He is uh, he's a treat. Wonderful part of KU history. He sure is a real gem. Robinson foul. Well, KU is in the bonus and has been for a while. Now the question is, can they convert? Yep. This is what Kansas wants to do: get that ball into the low box area to Robinson. And Ratliff unable to keep him from. 
getting it up without fouling it. Fourth foul on Ratliff. Robinson for the day, 4-4. Four four. I got one in the game. So Ratliff will head to the bench. Steve Moore back, number 32. So far, Vern, what's allowing Kansas to claw back is getting to the free throw line, but also some timely three-point shooting. And the defense has picked up a little bit. Ratliff will have to sit for a while now with those four fouls. Seven more, so seven point margin. High screen set by Moore. Pressing, taken away. Tehan has it after Relaford accomplished the strip. Here's Taylor. Closely guarded foul on Pressy. That's his fourth. So the Tigers with serious foul problems now, and they have no depth. None. So Matt Pressy's going to come on with four fouls, and his brother, Phil Pressy, will head to the bench, having picked up his fourth. And Relaford, who struggled at the free throw line, will be back at the line. Shooting one and one. He's one of four. <laughs> Ratliff, Pressy, and Pressy from Missouri with four fouls each. That's a real problem because it minimizes the ability of Missouri to be aggressive defensively. That's what Phil Pressy is able to do at the point of attack. And there you see it right there. Tipped away by Relaford. Out of bounds on the tip. It'll be Missouri ball. Dixon goes left. Tehan got a part of it, all ball. Robinson with the rebound. Here's Tyshawn Taylor. Takes it all the way. No basket. Moving screen, uh, no, foul on me, I beg your pardon. It was on Moore. They called that foul on Moore. Boy, that's a close one. He seemed to be outside of the restricted area arc. And I thought was in pretty good position. Good aggressive move by Taylor. And that's been the story of this second half. The aggressiveness of Kansas has really picked up. One more. He's four of five from the line now. It's going to be a blocking foul on Tyshawn Taylor. Well, they exploded after the free throw, did they not? It's a three-point margin, and they do. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. goodness. Look where that ranks on the decibel meter. Almost concert-like. Under six to go. Short Dixon with the three-point attempt. Jayhawk ball. It's Taylor and Tihon. 
Young, Relaford, and Robinson. There's the double from English on Robinson. Back to him. He goes baseline up under. No. Relaford tries to save it. And does. The game has changed drastically from the free flowing small ball dribble drive action of the first half in the first four minutes of this half to more smash mouth like. Grind it out. Get it in the paint. Draw foul. Whoa. No issue. There's no, there there's no backcourt. That, that's, that, 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 that's irrelevant. And that's not a quality that's look. Not, no. And Bill Self looking at Tyshawn Taylor. Why? Why? You want guys playing with freedom, but you also want savvy. Missouri has missed its last five from the field. The lead is three with 5.15 to go. Denman. Dixon. Matt Cressy, there's Robinson defensively. Moore back outside. Ten on the shot clock. Under five to play. Turnover. Here comes Tehan. Bounce pass off the glass. No good. Jumper for three, no. Air ball. Bad shot there. And that's a couple of times now where Missouri has just simply settled for a cast up three without moving the defense. Phil Pressy at the scores table. So is Ricardo Ratliff. Frank Hayes feeling like they're losing rhythm and he needs those guys back on the floor. Robinson misses. Comes down to Steve Moore. You saw the graphic about lead changes and ties. That graphic has not changed since the end of the first half. Timeout, Missouri. <laughs> Missouri still clings to a three-point lead, but they're in the midst of a scoring drought. Team fouls now. Ten for Missouri, so Kansas shooting two from now on. And Kansas with only five. Missouri does have the possession now. Well, they've gone almost six minutes without a field goal at the Missouri Tigers. And part of it has been shot selection, Vern. They have not balanced being methodical with being aggressive. And that happens when you have a big lead. You want to use clock, and sometimes you lose a little bit of your edge. They've got to get back to driving the ball and getting it inside. And when you bring Flip Pressy back into the game, he usually can find something good for you. And he did. Ratliff was the recipient of the pass, and Ratliff and Pressy both playing with four fouls. And Pressy can be a little bit of a gambler defensively. He's got to really rein himself in to not creep, not fall, come up with that fifth foul. He can't look to go for steals at all, just be solid defensively. What a pass from Elijah Johnson, who is also back on the floor with four fouls, and the margin is again at three, with 3.14 to go. Robinson has 20. I think Missouri's got to really look to try to drive the ball if they can. English, short off the glass. Robinson with his ninth rebound. So one away from his 20th double-double of the year. And if you're Kansas, you play through Robinson inside. Got to allow him to help you get a perimeter shot if he can't go to work in the paint. Or well, this guy here can dribble drive you. Tyshawn Taylor. Behan inside. Robinson off the glass. Ratliff has the four fouls, Burns. So there's no reason you don't throw it in the paint if you're Kansas. The margin is one. It's Pressy again, and Denman 
running the baseline, takes the pass, and lays it off the glass to extend the lead back to three. Time call, Kansas. still has committed only five fouls in this half, Missouri 10. Dodgers do have the possession arrow. 73-70 with 2.05 to go. It'll be Tyshawn Taylor, Elijah Johnson, Tehan, Robinson, and Relaford. That's for Kansas. So no brainer for the Jayhawks. Play through Robinson. Ratliff with the four fouls. Actually, Moore is out there now. So a substitution by Frank Hayes. He's going to try to put his body on Robinson. Here's Relaford. Spin. English. 149 to go. Time called once again. Craig Gumbel in New York. North Carolina trailed Virginia by four at halftime. Came back, led by three. Virginia's John Tell Evans looking for the tie. Not even close. 54-51. North Carolina, a winner over the Cavaliers. Vernon Clark, back to you guys. All right, Greg, thank you. And uh, time now to see how the voting went on today's Facebook poll. This, uh, the results were tallied with Missouri up by a bunch, 39% for them, Kansas 28, Michigan State, North Carolina followed that. Here's Relaford. He is now four of seven at the line today. Over the course of the year, 65% free throw shooter. Well, Kansas was in this position themselves uh, about three weeks ago, right? Yeah. In terms of trying to close it out after having a lead, not as large a lead, but trying to hold down, hold on. Let's see if they've learned what it's going to take to finish a tight one late. Pressing. Denman. Pump fake. Goes by Relaford. This underneath. Foul call. Is down. The foul is on Robinson. I think it's Denman. It is Denman. He took a shot after he got into the lane, and uh, not sure exactly what, where the problem is, but he's trying to walk it off and talk it off, claiming he was fouled. Looks like he's grabbing his shoulder, but he made a nice pass to Ratliff, who will have two free throws. After he was fouled by Thomas Robinson. This is, uh, as we've said throughout, just an outstanding free throw team. Never more so than in the last two minutes of a game where, as a team, they're hitting 79.5%. Yep. And now you've got Ricardo Ratliff at the line. Two of two so far. Sure. Smooth. All rope, we call it. Matt Pressey's going to come on the floor, and his brother Phil will take a rest. Denman's still trying to shake off whatever it was. I think you're right. I think it was a shoulder. Uh huh. Offense, defense substitutions here by Frank Hayes. Done a nice job. He's going to get Ratliff out of there now and get Steve Moore back in the bang with Robinson in the paint. Missouri for the game, 12 of 14 from the line. Something Kansas, they've done all year long. Yeah, Kansas has won the volume game at the free throw line. They've taken 26. Actually, maybe 28 now. That was the, before the Relaford pair. Johnson looks inside for Robinson. 115 to go. Boy, Moore and Robinson really fighting down in the low post. No double team. Turn around off the glass, too strong. Rebound Missouri. Excellent job by Steve Moore to fight him and then challenge him and force him over the top through his body. One minute to go. Missouri calls timeout. Missouri has led since the 6:15 mark of the first. 
half of play. The largest lead was 19. It was 12 at the break. And then extended to 19 points. KU is clawed back, but they trail by three again with 61 seconds to go. They've got, enough, they've got enough time here, Vern, to defend without fouling, but they need to stop. Missouri, on the other hand, wants to maximize this shot clock and try to get something going to the basket. If not, just a high quality look is what they're desiring here. Ten on the shot clock. Good defense by Taylor. Four on the shot clock. Tough, tough. Oh, my gracious. It's halfway down. Yes, it was. Well, you got to attack the goal here. You don't need a three right here, Vern. I think a good timeout, you draw up a play to get that ball inside and try to score right away in the paint area. You don't have to settle for a three here. Plenty of time to stretch the game out if you're Kansas. How about the contested three? down in the basket and said, no, not this time. Jayhawks out of timeouts. And should they go to the line, they'll also be shooting too, no matter if it's a shooting foul. But they trail by three, Missouri 75-72. Missouri obviously wants to defend without fouling. Make Kansas get a basket over you. You know they're gonna try to throw it inside, at least that's what I would do if I was Kansas. Either a drive, hard drive, or a post up. And you want to try to get something fairly quick here, Vern, to maximize that clock. Well, T Hat hasn't missed from three point range. He will inbound the ball. We've got Elijah Johnson, Travis Rutherford, Robinson, and Taylor on the floor. Here's not, Johnson. Not opposed to a good look at the three if you get one. And that's what they're trying to do. There's the dish. Oh. Robinson. Oh, he went down hard. And he was and fouled. fouled. He is perfect at the line today. And appears to be just fine. That's beautifully executed, partner. A little dribble weave action. If the three availed itself, they might have looked at it, but I think they were trying to get that ball inside off of movement to Robinson. Perfect at the line today, six for six, with 16.1 seconds to go. This is for the top. Timeout, Missouri. The Jayhawks were down 19 early in this half. We're tied. Well, they haven't stopped since time was called. No timeouts for either team. Kansas has committed six fouls. They've also righted the ship at the free throw line. Remember, they were 10 of 20. Kansas has made its last nine at the strike. That's how you close. You got to make free throws. You got to take care of the ball. You got to get good shots, and you need stops. They've done all of the above. Can they get a stop here? 10.1 to go in a tie game. It's Cressy guarded by Johnson. Takes it all the way. Block. Tip. Overtime. How fitting in the 267th game between these two old rivals. Robinson, Mr. Robinson, of course. Kansas ties it on a field goal and a free throw from Thomas Robinson, maintains the tie on a block from Thomas Robinson and Bill Self, only the eighth coach in the history of KU basketball. Clapping his hands. Here's what's at stake once again. With a victory, Kansas assures no worse than a tie for the eighth consecutive season. With a win, Missouri ties Kansas, and they have the tiebreaker edge. And this, as we have said, 
is the last game between these two conference opponents for the foreseeable future. How fitting. Let's play five more. Radliff and Robinson will jump at center. KU, Tyshawn Taylor. He's joined by Elijah Johnson, Rutherford, Robinson, and Connor Tehan. Defensively, Missouri has Pressey, English, Dixon, Denman, and Ratliff. And Ratliff playing with the four fouls. For three. The first lead for KU since 6.15 remaining in the first half of play. Foul call. Good look for Tyshawn Taylor. He's been playing at an All-America level since conference play began. And that's what you expect from a big-time senior in overtime. Playing with confidence. At the other end, the foul is on Taylor. And here's Dixon, who for the season is 89% from the line. KU 78-76. Robinson, yes! Thomas Robinson has 27. Denman for three. There's the answer. KU by one. Denman now with 23. Tehan, closely guarded. Matt pressing. Back it comes. Relifer. Short. Rebound. Matt pressing. And Missouri with a chance to reclaim the lead. Dixon in and out. Robinson with another rebound. He's now got his 20th double-double of the season secure. 27 points. And that is his 11th rebound. Taylor, quick. Fuller got two more. Timeout, Missouri. See the foul situation, Pressy Ratliff and Pressy with 40. Johnson has four, and then a trio of players, Robinson, Taylor, Young. There is Larry Brown. He coached this team from 83 to 88. He has remained a deeply loyal part of the KU family and is here. He went on the road with him last week, told me yesterday morning he thinks he's going on the road with him this next week. He loves the game and has served it and contributed to it at the highest of levels for a long time. Including a national championship with Danny Manning as his captain in 88. From the corner, a forced shot, loose ball. And I think it's going to be a foul on KU. And they get Connor Tehan, Vern. 
One of the things that's happened with Missouri from the time they got the big lead, they've settled for a lot of jump shots. Not in rhythm, as we saw in the first half. Some of that is due to the defense of improvement this half of Kansas. But I think a part of it has been just settling and not probing and driving as much as they need to. Ratliff is now perfect five for five at the line. Pressy's back, Pressy's gone. <laughs> One Pressy for another. Yes. Offense, defense, substitution. We've made note of that with the foul trouble. Both Pressy's and Ratliff have four. And if Ratliff makes this free throw, I think Steve Moore will be back in the game. Getting ready. He did, and he is. So Ratliff with those four fouls sits down. Steve Moore back. And it's a one-point ball game, 2-11 to go in overtime. You know, it's a good move by Frank Cave, and I think both coaches have done an excellent job, Vern. Now it's about your players executing, and that's what you want to see. And fast, Robinson. No double. Up, under, short. Steve Moore got the rebound. Missouri with a chance to take the lead. Got what they wanted, don't you think? I think so, yeah. He didn't get the lift on that one that he did the prior time. And give credit to Steve Moore, who walled him up effectively without fouling. seconds to go in OT. Denman. Dixon. Off the mark. Saved by Moore. Well, Missouri continuing to settle for the perimeter shot burn. Somebody for them has to try to put pressure on Kansas by driving the ball. I think they're taking Kansas off the hook a bit by settling for jumpers. Pressing short, Robinson out of bounds, and a foul is called. That'll be the afternoon for Matt Pressing. Pressy actually got bumped there as he went to the lane. No call, and Robinson will have free throws as Matt Pressy has been Dairy Queen. Matt Pressy fouled out, picked up three fouls really quickly, and Robinson's at the line where he's been perfect today, seven of seven. At the line, shooting to Thomas Robinson. And how about the performances college basketball fans have seen today on CBS? Anthony Davis. 28 11 and I think six blocks Thomas Robinson a big-time 20 plus double double for him and his first free throw miss but terrific performances by the two leading candidates for player of the year today from the corner English back outside Dixon guarded by Tyshawn Taylor This for the lead. Yes! Denman! The three-pointer from Denman, who shot daggers at the heart of this KU team in the first game. And he comes up huge with 40 seconds to go in this one. Thirty-four point six to go. Marcus Denman for the day now six of ten from three-point range. You know, he just kind of bided his time. He had been quiet for a while, Vern. And I spoke to him before the game. You know, he went through a slump until he got going again here recently in his last seven ball games. He said, I didn't do anything different. I basically continued to wait and take good shots, and I knew my stroke would return. And he's proven to be a big time shot maker and taker. Now, Kansas, similar situation to prior to the end of regulation. You go inside fairly quickly if you can. What do you mean like that? Picture paper. That's the inventory of late game plays that every coach has. Right. He showed us a little something different here 
Nimrod is going to pressure up the line, cleared the backside, and got a bounce pass back cut the prior time at the end of regulation. Dribble weave and got it into the post. They're checking the clock for the correct time. Beautifully executed play out of the timeout. And we had probably, looks like we may need to add another second, perhaps. Let's take another look at it and see where. Keeping an eye on the left, the game clock, shot clock is irrelevant here. So 27.2 is where we are. So a second looks like it should be added. Ah, uh, they're adding two seconds. Okay, two. Okay. 28.6. Yeah. Mark Whitehead coming over and telling us that neither team may have heard it. Yeah. Neither team can sub because that was a timing error. Exactly. And so that's uh, helpful, isn't it? It is, but I think had Frank Hayes been able to sub, you might see Ratliff out there instead yeah. of Steve Moore. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've got to go reasonably quickly here because you're down one. You still want to have some time if you don't score to get an offensive rebound or foul to extend the game. Dunham. Jumper got it. 12.1 to go. Got to get back to by Sean Taylor. Off the glass and he'll shoot free throws with 8.3. I think they may have gotten Dr. Phil Pressy. And that'll DQ him. Wow. Big time play here by Denton. And this is a tough shot. A runner off the dribble. And then a nice job here by Taylor. To go right at Missouri in transition. Well, right, not much of a, but that's a case of where you're not alert getting back defensively, and you're vulnerable to picking up a cheap one. Not a lot of contact there as you look at Jeff Withy, who's been rendered ineffective today in part because of the nature of Missouri's style, but also the injury to his leg or foot that he suffered. Well, Tyshawn Taylor is going to be the guy at the line with 8.3 to go for the day, 5.6. He's only a 66% free throw shooter over the course of the first 28 games. And you go back to the game in Columbia, Tyshawn had a turnover late, actually two. One was an offensive foul, one was just losing the ball, and then he missed a couple of free throws as well that would have positioned Kansas perhaps to close that one out. So. He's got another opportunity. And he shoots two. <laughs> nice to get that first one down. It kind of crawled over the rim. They don't care how it gets in there. You got it. This is for the lead. I made one against Indiana years ago that hit the back iron and went to the top of the backboard and went in in this situation. You think I care? Defensive substitution here, a little more length and quickness on the floor for Kansas with Kevin Young. If you're Missouri, you've got to push it ahead and try to drive it and kick it. But you got to go faster than this. Three to go. Robinson backs away. No shot. KU wins. The Jayhawks came from 19 down. For Clark Kellogg, Vern Lundquist, saying so long from Lawrence, Kansas. Kansas wins it in overtime. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports on the road to the Final Four. At the end of the game, there's 
the last shot, and it came after the clock had expired. Well, for the last game, it was kind of fun. Good night from Lawrence.